All right, let's have a look at this one seemingly simple integral, but actually very nasty. So of course we automatic, automatically assume x to be a real number and tangent x, x to be non-negative because it's under the square root. And so <clears throat> first of all, substitution tangent x equal to t. So tangent x is equal to t squared. So x is equal to arc tangent of t squared, inverse tangent. So dx is equal to 1 over 1 plus t squared squared, t to the fourth. Differentiate the inside function, t squared, so twice of t dt. Now, the original integral right, is equal to tangent square, square root tangent x t, so t times dx, so twice of t squared over 1 plus t to the fourth dt. Now, uh, we have several different methods. So first method is perhaps we use partial fraction, split it into, uh, f factorize the bottom, split it into several fractions and determine the uh, constants. So that's actually the uh, straightforward method, which I also recommend. But here we actually use a different method also. So that is to divide everything by t squared, top and bottom. So that's going to give me just 2 over t squared plus 1 over t squared dt. Of course, here I require t to be non-zero because we are doing the division, right? So t non-zero, in other words, x non-zero, right? So uh, in that, that way. So that way, that way the first I'm gonna split it into split it into just two integrals. That is one over t squared plus one over t squared dt plus the same thing t squared plus one over t squared dt. Notice Notice that we observe t squared plus 1 over t squared can be written into t plus 1 over t quantity squared. So that's going to equal to t squared plus 1 over t squared plus 2. So we just minus 2 to make it the same. And also, so also at the same time, we notice that can be also written into t minus 1 over t quantity squared. So that's going to give me t squared plus 1 over t squared and minus 2. So I just plus 2, right? Exactly the same thing. So first of all, I'm going to... So that's going to give me uh, 1 dt t plus 1 over t squared minus 2. This one, 1 over t minus 1 over t quantity squared plus 2 dt, right? So if I let t plus 1 over t equal to u, then du is just 1 minus 1 over t squared dt. If I let t minus 1 over t equal to v, then dv equal to 1 plus 1 over t squared dt. All right, so that way I can just easily write it into... So first of all, I have to make up the du, right? I have to minus 1 over t squared. Minus 1 over t squared. I have to also plus it back, right? But can I plus it back in here? I think so, because... The bottom are exactly the same as this bit, right? So plus one over t squared. So here at the top, I make, I just made up the dv, right? So now I can just 
when you write it into, like I said, top, now it becomes du. Now, bottom is just u square minus 2. And this is just top is now just dv. And bottom is just v square plus 2, right? Here's minus 2, here's plus 2. And so u and v has nothing to do with integral by parts. It's just some dummy variables here. So uh, this should be some standard integrals. So first of all, let me, let me rewrite 1 over u squared minus 2. That is equal to, I'm going to use partial fraction, like I said. Because uh, the bottom can be written into, like I said, u minus square root of 2 times u plus square root of 2. And that can be written into some constant over u minus square root of 2 plus some other constant over u plus square root of 2. If I guess to be 1, so I have u 1 plus 9 my, multiply by this u plus square root of 2. If I use negative 1 here, so negative 1 multiplied by this gives me minus u. So u minus u cancel out. This times that, positive square root of 2. Positive square root of 2. So twice of square root of 2. So I have to divide by twice of square root of 2 to uh, make it the same as this bit. Right? So I just have to integrate this and that, an uh, indefinite integral, right, to work out this. So that's going to give me the um, 1 over 2 square root of 2 times. The antiderivative of this, just some standard uh, log of u minus this bit. And this is just a, a negative sign, minus log of this bit. So uh, log inside, we do some division. So log of u minus square root of 2 over u plus square root of 2, right? Difference of log equals the uh, quotient, then use the log. And also I have to uh, make sure it's absolute value. It's positive, right? And is it positive in here? u is equal to t plus 1 over t. t is positive. t is positive. And t plus 1 over t is going to be bigger than or equal to twice of the square root of t times 1 over t. That is just 2. Right? That is just the a m g m inequality. So this is easily verifiable. So uh, this is already at least 2. So at least 2 minus square root of 2. So this is just easily positive. So this is fine. And we just plus this bit. This bit is what? So let me just write 1 over v squared plus 2. That is equal to 1 over 2 factor out. And plus 1. So v squared now becomes v squared over 2. So v over square root of 2 quantity squared. And so integrate this, integrate that, so dv and dv. So that should equal to 1 over 2 of times arc tangent of this bit. And also, uh, when we differentiate this, there is a chain rule, so uh, 1 over square root of 2, so you have to multiply by square root of 2, right? So this is easily verifiable. Differentiate this gives, me, gives you that. And so that's, copy down this, arc tangent v over square root of 2. So, so far we obtained this following expression. Uh, so before I plus c, let me just, uh, right now, 
because later on we're going to have a problem. So here's a substitution, tangent x equal to t, that's what I made, and u equal to this, v equal to that. So when t is not equal to zero, because remember I did division, I divided by t. And also that means x cannot equal to k pi, where k is a pos uh, is a integer. Uh, so in other words, so that's, that's not the point. So the point I'm trying to make, so I'm just going to quickly reach its simplified form. But that's not the main point. So square root of 2 over 4, <coughs> log of, right, substitute u, in, u t, t use tangent x. So in the end, I have log of uh, tangent x minus square root of 2 times tangent x plus 1 over tangent x plus square root of 2 times tangent x plus 1. That's a log. And then uh, followed by plus square root of 2 over 2 times arc tangent of square root of 2. And we have t minus 1. So square root of tangent x minus 1 over square root of tangent x. So, like I said, that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is that, uh, let's just call it big F of x. So this is antiderivative when, so before I plus c, this is antiderivative of this integrand when x is not equal to a multiple of pi. Now, what's its antiderivative when x is actually equal to multiple of pi? And to do that, first we have to consider the limit of this expression as x approaches k pi from the right hand side. So f of x will approach, let me see, k, x approaches k pi. Um, so tangent x approaches, I believe it's zero, right? Zero, 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 zero. One, log one, zero. Zero minus one over positive zero. Right, positive infinity, negative infinity. So negative arc tangent, negative infinity. That is uh, negative half pi. So in the end, negative square root of two over four times pi as x approaches k pi from the right hand side. Right? The reason is because to make sure tangent x is positive, we have to make sure x lives in the first and third quadrant. Right? So k pi is just uh, this point, this point, this point, this point, right? Pi, two pi, three pi. Right? Uh, pi, two pi, uh, zero pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi. So x is going to approach from the right hand side, right hand side. Right. So that way I must construct a piecewise function. Right? Because x is not defined at this point. So piecewise function will solve this problem. When x not equal to k pi, equal to f of x. When x is equal to k pi. And I say negative square root of 2 over 4 times pi. So that way, this piecewise function is actually continuous at k pi, since its functional value is equal to the limit value. Right? For example, negative square root of 2 over 4 pi. Right? So, uh, Approaching, approaching this limit by piecewise function, right, so equal to this point. And also here is uh, again. So again, okay, same limit. I right, just approaching. Uh, for example, x approach pi. X approach pi from the right hand side. Still the same thing. 2 pi, approaching 2 pi, same limit. 
I saying redefined value. So that way I can possibly try and find its derivative at zero. Derivative at zero. No, derivative at x equal to k pi. Plus h incremental change, right? Minus g of k pi over h, and as h, so let's g k pi plus h, k pi plus k pi plus h tangent k pi plus h. It's just tangent h, so it's just f of h, f of h. Uh, this is meaningful because h is not equal to uh, k pi, right? So minus g k pi, g k pi is uh, this bit, plus square root of 2 over 4 times pi over h. So remember, as h approaches 0, h approaches 0, in other words, uh, k could be equal to 0, right? approach zero from the right hand side, approach this limit. And then you have this number, so top becomes approaching zero. So zero over zero, right? We can use L'Hopital's rule. So this becomes one. So this becomes F prime of H. This is gone. And so that F prime of H is just F prime of H is this derivative is just this integrand, right? So that is the square root of tangent h over y. Then as h approach, for example, zero from the right hand, so this approach zero. Yes, so the derivative at zero of function g is zero, right? So it aligns with the fact that no, I mean derivative at k pi is zero. Deriv at k pi, right? So when x is equal equal to k pi, this collapses to zero. So some functions derivative is zero. So, function's derivative equal to zero, yes. So, uh, that's what I was talking about. So, this antiderivative is just g of x plus c. Now I can just finally plus c. So, that's the problem I was uh, mentioning. I was talking about when you use this, uh, this division technique, so there is a pro problem you have to uh, discuss different situations when x is equal to k pi, not equal to k pi. Right? So I still recommend the partial fraction.